You've got your trip already booked to Disney World, but you're worried about going during peak times. You're worried about the lines, you're worried about the crowds, and managing behaviors of your kids. Well, here are some tools that you can put in your tool belt. Disney's actually already provided them for free. What? That's crazy. Let's talk about them. It's true. You can actually get some free stuff at Disney. <laughs> what I'm talking about is called Play Disney Parks. It's an app. I know, maybe not as exciting as, I don't know, a Mickey pretzel. No, those are gross. Don't do those. Don't eat those. Go for either the jalapeno cheese stuffed pretzel, which really is not that spicy, or go for the sweet cream cheese stuffed pretzel. Stay away from the Mickey pretzel. You can get the Bavarian pretzel and you can get that at Hollywood Studios or in Germany at Epcot. Okay. I'm off my pretzel rant. We did a little experiment inside the parks with the Play Disney Park app, and frankly, we totally screwed it up. <laughs> but watch this and then I'll explain. Play Disney Parks, what is it? Yeah, we're gonna go to the temple in the Indiana Jones area because there's uh, the Temple of Mara and there's a bunch of glyphs on the wall that'll match the exact keyboard that they gave me. And you type in on the glyphs of what you see in the order and it'll translate on there. So if I type in a random letter, it'll just... And you can just go back. Oh, that's cool. So we're gonna do that next. Okay. Oh, they turned it off. Oh no, what's it supposed to do? Somebody did this. Oh no, oh blimey! Oh. oh. Deciphering an artifact down here. <laughs> there are 50 years of sorrow now before the destroyer of this vessel. Uh, oh no. <laughs> I think it's showing us where we're supposed to go. That might be in there. I don't think I've seen this around. Well, you know I haven't. <laughs> yeah, blinds back. There used to be a show called the Backlot Tour. I remember going to that. I don't know when. When did I go? 2001, I think. It was my first trip here. This is the exit. I don't see a temple anywhere. I mean, maybe it is inside. Okay, but that's on Play Disney Parks. So let's go over and see if we can do a bounty hunter sequence. We were in the wrong place. <laughs> that's the one bad thing about Play Disney Parks. It has activities and adventures for all of the parks, including Disneyland. We spent a good hour twice. We did this twice. So we did this for the Temple of Doom because that is in Disneyland, not in Hollywood Studios in Disney World. And then again at the end of the night, which I will spare you that, we were searching for Esmeralda she is, gives a fortune on Main Street, and we looked everywhere. We asked like five different cast members. Nobody had any idea what we were talking about. Well, it's because it's in California. Make sure that you pay attention and you read the top as to where the adventure is, because it does clearly say Disneyland. We just failed to read it. Now let's check out some of the bounty hunter sequences that we could do in Galaxy's Edge. Okay, so describe it. But is it complicated? Like what age would you recommend do this? Teenagers, honestly. Really? So not even little kids? 
Maybe not. There's a lot of reading and a lot of story. To okay. It, and it's not like, oh, do this. It's like, hey, walk around and encrypt certain things. So more like teenager and adult, true Star Wars fans, because I'm already like, I've already lost interest. So true Star Wars fans would geek out over it, yes or no? Yeah. You're geeking? Oh, okay, we're going. She's geeking and we're going. I have no idea where we're going. And the problem with doing Play Disney Parks back here at Galaxy's Edge is this is usually one of the busier areas. Although, we've been lucky. The past couple of times, it's not been heavy traffic back here. I always check a couple of rides, like Star Tours. If it's any more than 10, 15 minutes, then I know it's a busy day in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> Alien Swirling Saucer can get up to like 35 minutes or more. Anything, any attraction that I would be willing to participate in or ride on, 35 minutes is kind of my max of waiting in line. So I don't ever ride like Rise or Slinky Dog by myself. We have run across Mickey and Minnie's Runaway, Runaway Railway. We've come across that with a pretty short time. Tower of Terror is always the first thing we check when we come into Hollywood Studios. Oh, this is kind of a cool area though. But man, when it's packed, it's hard to maneuver. The bathrooms are really neat, though. <laughs> you need to check out the bathrooms. It's all very industrial. Let's go back and see what you're doing. My map's being glitchy. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Do we have a target? Target acquired? Do we gotta kill somebody? I think that's bounty hunting. This is just... I can look at that. This is is there a bounty hunting thing in there too? You have to connect to Magic Band. You have to do what? You have to have a Magic Band. Oh, okay. So Magic Band for bounty hunters. We don't look at the Star Wars data pad though. So what does the data pad do? Still a lot of reading. It's actually connects to the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's the same thing you were just doing? Well, no. Yeah, so you're either resistance or first order with accepting the job. What are we supposed to, we're supposed to get to rise? Why? We have to go on to rise? The recruit line. Oh. These are like game, like games you play while you're in the ride for more interactive storytelling. Oh, I see. So we this the one that I was originally playing. You do all over the map. Okay. But this one has a specific job, and that's in. So the data pad is pretty much while you're in the queue for the ride. Yeah. Well, rise resistance. Like they they got multiple. But it still looks like it's a lot of reading, a lot of stories, so probably not little kid type situation. Just somebody who wants to enhance their experience while they're and waiting in line for the ride. Well there's all there's all kinds there's all kind of jobs. So that's just the one it gave me. Okay. That that's the one that it gave me, the first one. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, like this video, hit that notification bell, and please share this video with a friend. I greatly appreciate it. Well, we discovered that the, the game, really, the adventure in Galaxy's Edge, is going to be for super fans of Star Wars. There's a lot of reading, so it might not be for your little kids unless they are just really into reading. I, I completely lost interest. <laughs> but that's just me. Now, I will say that in every area of the park on the Play Disney 
app, you also have trivia and it gives you trivia based on where you are. That is something that can be for everyone. However, here's my caveat. Yes, we have done this and my 11 year old thinks that he should know everything and he should get the highest score. And some of those questions, I mean, they were, I was like, you guys, I don't think any of you guys have seen that movie. I mean, it was really old. I think we were in Magic Kingdom when that happened. So I, I don't know. It's kind of a hit or miss. Now we tend to stay away from electronics when we're in the parks because especially my youngest one, he's like a moth to a flame and it just doesn't improve behaviors. We haven't done a whole lot of Play Disney Parks. I will tell you that the adventure, the DuckTales adventure in Epcot, that is fun. That is for everyone. And I would recommend at least doing that one because it has something in each of the world showcase areas and you're looking for clues and then I really wish we would have when we were in Epcot we totally forgot to do a sequence on that we were so excited about the AP lounge that we completely forgot about the play Disney parks ah so frustrating when we were in Mexico you're looking for puzzle pieces and you're looking for a lantern and then the lights like turn on or they flicker and then we went into the shop and the guitar started playing which you know bless the cast members who get to be in that shop because I'm sure they hear that a hundred times a day <laughs> at least it was entertaining so I wanted to see what the other countries had and I really wanted to record some of that it just, it didn't happen this trip. You're just gonna have to trust me. Pros and cons. It's an electronic, and if your kids can handle electronics, then it might be a good way to keep them entertained, especially when you're standing in the queues because there are activities or trivia specifically for the attractions. If electronics are a problem, then maybe don't tell them about Play Disney Parks. <laughs> I could go, I could go either way. It really, it really depends. Some kids don't have any issues. My kids, electronics make them crazy. My 13 year old, that's how she can drown out the crowd, but she's not usually on Play Disney Parks. She has like a coloring app or something and she can sit there and work on her pictures and just kind of ignore the world around her. We never tried in Disney, but in Universal, Pokemon Go was really great. The kids loved playing Pokemon Go, especially walking through City Walk. That might be another option, and I, I don't know. I've, I've never tried it in Disney, but I'd love to know. Have you ever tried it in Disney? Let me know in the comments. If electronics are out for your gang, never fear. There are other activities that you can do. In Epcot, you have KidCot, so you can go around and you can collect postcards from each of the countries, and they usually either will write your name or they'll write a little greeting. Or there's like a, a prize, which is basically another postcard, and you can get that at any location. I would go ahead and get that completer, maybe at your first stop, in case you don't hit all of them. In Animal Kingdom, you can collect Wilderness Explorer badges. Look at this. I am a Wilderness Explorer. <laughs> there are a ton of badges and you can find them. You can find the map either right here in the book or it is on your My Disney Experience app. It's one of the selections that you can choose. You can look for the Wilderness Explorer badges, which is kind of nice but it's also great that they have them here on paper because then the kids can do them and they're not in their phones. I don't think that you would be able to get all of the Wilderness Explorer badges in one trip to Animal Kingdom. I mean, the park really is huge and there's four of them, four or five of them out at Rafiki's Planet and they are not usually open past five, like 4.35 o'clock. So you would have to be there early in the morning 
and collect them as you go all the way around. But I just, I don't know if you could. I mean, you're going to be walking Gorilla Falls. You're going to be walking the Maharaja Trek. You're going to be going out to Rafiki's Planet. So there's a lot, there's a lot of them. <laughs> But it's fun. They can learn about animals and habitats. On Kilimanjaro safaris, there's a whole page where you can find the animals and you can check them off. And then when you go and get your badge, a couple of questions like what animals did you see and stuff like that. I mean, the, they don't, you don't just go and get a sticker. There's... There's a lesson to be learned or something is going on for each badge, but it, it doesn't take a lot of time and it is fun. And sometimes if there's a Wilderness Explorer cast member that's there and they're talking to a group, you can kind of slide in and then maybe don't answer the questions <laughs> and then they'll just give you the badge. There's stuff in here that they can fill out as well and they can keep track. So this, I, had, I had a lot of fun doing the Wilderness Explorer, but I think I just did a few each each day that I went. I think it took me like three trips, but I wasn't super focused on it. Again, if you are at the parks when it's super busy, like that horrible day that we had at Disney, that was back in February. The parks were so incredibly crowded. Everything went wrong. I'll link that right here for you. Go ahead and watch that. That would have been one of those days that if that was your first trip, this is definitely something that you would want to add to your repertoire just to get around the crowds. The lines were incredibly long. The place was packed. You might not have gotten much accomplished as far as going into the rides. The shows, I think you'll be okay. Lion King is always going to be pretty full as far as the arena, but there's four different sides. It really holds a lot of people. So I don't think that one is a difficult one. Plus you have the bird shows. It's like Feather Friends in Flight. And then you also have Nemo, which I highly recommend. I couldn't believe it. I went on that for the first time when I did my solo trip. I'll link that here for you. That was a fabulous show. I couldn't believe that I'd heard mixed reviews about, eh, it's okay, it's not that great. I thought it was wonderful. It was it was great. And, and it was nice in the theater. And there weren't a lot of people there. Just looking for places to get away. The animation experience, now that's out at Rafiki's Planet. But again, there's like four or five badges out there for Wilderness Explorers. So that's fun. And then the animation experience, you get to sit down and you learn how to draw a character. The only problem we had was my son has gone onto YouTube and he has done those drawing tutorials and he's drawn superheroes and all kinds of things and he did fabulous. So I thought, oh, this is going to be easy for him. Well, when he's on YouTube, he can pause it and rewind it so he goes at his pace where when you're at the animation experience, you know, the guy is just kind of whoever you have, the cast member is just kind of talking and drawing and you get to see it on a screen but there is no stopping there is no going back we had some meltdowns that's just how it works so you're gonna have to gauge that or maybe just give them a piece of paper and tell them you know let's wait maybe even record it that's something we should have done see I didn't even think about this record the animation experience and then let your child take the blank piece of paper and they can do it at their own pace. That probably would have been better because here I am trying to help him and draw my own and my scar ended up looking like a dreidel. <laughs> I'm not that great of an artist to begin with, so it, it didn't help. And last but not least, Magic Kingdom. You actually can hunt for treasure. It is so much fun. I did take some videos of myself going through a treasure map. So I will add those here to the end. There's another random thing that is in Magic Kingdom right now. And I don't know how long it's going to be there, but I was a little disappointed, honestly. It's called Smellifants on Parade. They have these 
elephants, like the cartoon elephants, and it's over in Storybook Circus. They're really cute. They looked like popcorn or a corn dog or a churro. The fragrance wasn't coming through. I expected more because Disney has patented their fragrance releasing system. So I thought, this is really going to be good. I mean, but you couldn't hardly smell it. You could get like faint whiffs. Like, okay, maybe that's cotton candy. You know, the popcorn could have easily been coming from the popcorn cart around the corner. <laughs> I think the one we smelt the strongest was the churro. The cinnamon and sugar. So that was a disappointment. But they were fun to look at. But I did have a good time doing the treasure map. And there's like seven of those, I think. On your My Disney Experience app, it will keep track of which ones you've done. So if you go and you do a map, you know, just like take a break. We're going to get away from things. And and you'll see in the videos that you're, you're not always in the middle of the crowd. Sometimes you get to go down like a little side alley where maybe there's no through traffic. It might be a cast member door or something. But they've got little hidden little hidden things that you're looking for and, and the maps are fun and you get to keep the map. So I, I think that would be something that my kids would enjoy, especially for there during a really busy day and the crowds are extra and the heat is extra. A nice little break. And of course, there's always Tom Sawyer's Island. Let them run and go. Okay, I'm looking for the feather. I see a skull, but I don't see a feather. It's supposed to be right there. Oh, the feather is on the skull. I thought that was a different part of the map. So you just kind of touch your... There we go. You seek the treasure of the Pacific? I will show you where it rests. But beware, dangerous oh. men lurk me What the? Now you're savages. Holy crap. They are not My good magic too. has protected you this time. Look closely at my necklace. Search your map for the magical mark of a mask. There you will speak to the pirate who has come before you. Oh my goodness. Okay. There he is. All right, so that's the mask, and he's right there. I don't know what's around there, but let's go find it. Okay, so it's actually on the other side of the magic carpet. So we will go check. These are so much fun. I think there's five of them. You don't have to do them all, but doing one and kind of hiding from the crowds, they kind of take you to locations that are not so busy, like there's nothing there, so. Magic carpet. Watch out, they spit. Okay, it looks like it's over here in front of the tree house. Ah, there he is. There's our mask. And there's our symbol. On top of the skull. Whoops. Right there. Okay, there's our mask. Does it work? There you go. Not so long ago, I was a pirate just like you be. The treasure of the Pacific. I sought with me own two eyes. I can show you where to find it. Oh, Hank. Hi. Who's hiding behind that mask? Thank you kindly, scurry dog. You've shown me precisely oh, where I need freaky. to see Barbosa. <laughs> Perfect wind blowing. Quick, you've got to find the treasure before he does. 
the key to that post. You're close yeah. now. Find the magical mark of the palm tree on your map and get the treasure. Okay, the palm tree is in the very top corner. Circle it around. Looks like it's right there next to the water masks, the masks that spit water. So let's walk back right over there. Watch out for the camel, he spits. Wait for him. Ooh, it's bright, there he goes. All right, the masks over here. So let's see what they do. So if you ever wonder, you can always see that there is a skull. So that's how this game is played. We are finding the skull. I'm getting better at this. It's only my second stop. Look at me. Oh, and then I gotta get my pass out. <laughs> Beware of what? At last, we have found one worthy to bear the ocean's might. Oh, well, thank you. I'm worthy. Oh, hello. Go, go, and use it well. Did I accomplish it? Is that it? You found the treasure of the Pacific. Well done. Now, seeing as I can always use more proper pirates to help me find more treasures, I invite you to set course back to the investment center and some able bodied missions for over me. <laughs> cool. Look at Captain Jack Sparrow talking to us. Yay, we just got recruited. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful in helping you plan for your next vacation and, you know, having a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, an exit strategy, like that's just what we do when we have kids, right? Or especially our special needs kids that sometimes need to be extra managed. It's nice to know that you have options and it's not just about waiting in the lines for the rides or waiting for the characters. There are other options that you have and you're not wasting your time in the parks. I don't want you to feel like you're wasting your time. I've said this before. The shows are great and they're hardly ever busy and you've got a few of them in Magic Kingdom. You've got several in all of the countries usually have something or a museum or they'll have a little show. Then there's also, you know, cartoon like vacation fun or figment like there's there's a lot of options that people skip over because they're not the big name stuff and those are great places to kind of duck in and hide if you if the world's getting a little too peopley and Hollywood Studios has it too Animal Kingdom has several plus the trails are awesome so you don't have to be on Kilimanjaro safaris especially if you don't have a DAS or you're not buying Genie Plus like, you can still go and see all of the animals in the different areas, and it's not going to be quite as crowded, and your kids are not just going to be standing in line in the hot sun. It's kind of nice to have those options. Thanks for tuning in with me. I'm so glad that you're here. I'll see you on my next video.